We'll talk now about the characteristics of corporations. Your book goes through many different types of corporations. Most of them we don't care about much for our class. It's easy for a textbook writer to list information, but it's hard to go through and take out all the things you don't really need. So let's talk about what you do need to know. Closed corporations are corporations with not too many shareholders basically not a lot of shareholders, probably no more than a hundred, and such corporations are not publicly traded. This means that they are not traded on, for example, the New York Stock Exchange or one of the other exchanges. You do need to know about subchapter S corporations. We'll be talking more about those later. These are corporations that provide significant tax advantages to the owners, but have significant limitations. I would like for you to know the differences among foreign, domestic, and alien corporations because it's not intuitive. Corporations are created by the state, not the federal government. So you're following state law. A domestic corporation in California would be a corporation created in California. So a California corporation is a domestic corporation here in California. How about a Nevada corporation? Well, as far as California is concerned, this is a foreign corporation. So foreign doesn't mean some other country the way we normally use the word. It means from some other state. Well, how about a business corporation from some other entity? What are we going to call them? They actually call these alien corporations. It may seem an odd term, but that's the term. Finally, you should know about nonprofit corporations. I'm sure you've heard that term before. It's just different from partnerships. There's no such thing as a nonprofit partnership because you can't even create a nonprofit partnership. The only way you can create a partnership is if your goal is to create a profit. That's not true with corporations. It is possible to create a corporation where the purpose is not to make a profit. Educational foundations, charities, there are a lot of organizations where these are appropriate. What are the characteristics of a corporation? They are considered a legal entity. In other words, as far as the law is concerned, the corporation is a person. They're sometimes called a creature of the state. And I know this sounds strange, but what they mean is that you don't exist as a corporation until the government says you exist. You need government approval, that you file the necessary forms and the government approves them. Corporations are characterized by the free transferability of ownership. The idea with corporations is that they want people to be able to buy and sell their own ownership interests fairly easily. Why? Because if you knew that you could sell your interests easily, you would probably be more likely to buy in the first place. The idea behind corporations was to get people to invest in businesses. This will increase the capital available for businesses and hopefully increase the availability for overall wealth. That's because you can buy and you can sell. So you can go ahead and buy Allstate if you think that company is doing well, and if not, sell it. This is unlike partnerships, for example, where you cannot sell your interest to a person unless all your partners agree to it. Because if they have to agree to be partners with this new person, just forget it if they do not want that relationship. So corporations and partnerships are very different. Ownership in a corporation is issued by stock is a passive ownership. It generally shouldn't matter to the corporation who owns the stock. Another characteristic of corporations is limited liability. The owners, the shareholders, are not generally liable for the corporate debts. And that, again, makes it very attractive to invest. Another characteristic of corporations is perpetuity of existence. This means that they could exist theoretically forever, or indefinitely at least, because they're not dependent on the life of any particular people, the way a partnership is, for example. Another key distinction is that management and ownership are separate, unlike partnerships where the owners are the managers. In corporations, those are separate activities. So if you own a share of, for example, General Electric, 
Is General Electric interested in your advice on what they should be investing their research and development in? No, not really. You're just a passive investor. That doesn't mean that you can't fill more than one of these roles. For example, the employees of General Electric may also be shareholders of General Electric, but those are different roles with different characteristics. Shareholders have no right to manage the business. How about the regulation of corporations? Corporations are formed by the state. They are creatures of the state, not the federal government. So you really need to look at other state laws to figure out how they're governed. Your textbook mentions the uniform acts related to corporations. These uniform acts are not by themselves law. These are law only to the extent that a particular state has adopted them to be law. And a state may do that, or they may choose not to do that, or they can do it in part. They're in our book only by way of guidelines. The way I would read the sections of the book where you have uniform codes is to say, this is probably the general rule, but I want you to keep in mind that you need to look up the law in the particular state that you're incorporated in to find out what the law is. There are a lot of regulations related to corporations. The state has its own set of laws, of course, not just on forming a corporation, but on how the corporation operates. In addition, as we talk about in the securities podcast, both the federal government through the Securities and Exchange Commission, called the SEC, and the state through what's called blue sky laws, govern the issuance and trading of securities. Another form of regulation would be any regulatory agencies, whether federal or state. Think of the IRS, the FTC, the Food and Drug Administration. I'm not even going to try to list all the regulatory agencies that govern the activities of businesses, but there are a lot of regulatory agencies out there, and depending on the type of business you have, these may kick in. Another big area of regulation is antitrust. Both the federal and often state regulators have laws relating to antitrust, limiting businesses' ability to set prices and restrict competition. The states and the federal government want unlimited competition. Therefore, for example, they will have laws to limit monopolies, for example, because monopolies increase price and reduce choice. So antitrust regulations kick in. You're not responsible for any of these particular laws. I'm simply telling you that this is the environment in which corporations operate. How about regulation of foreign corporations? And again, remember foreign means from another state, not from another country. The U.S. Constitution has a commerce clause that limits any state's power to inhibit co commerce that crosses state lines. What does that mean? When we created this country, we wanted for each state to be able to regulate the activities within that state, but we didn't want them to set up barriers that would restrict trade across state lines. So, for example, the same kinds of things that we do internationally, for example, create tariffs so that there's a limit on importing goods from another country, we don't want states to be able to do that. Otherwise, for example, California might say, let's not allow Florida to export oranges into the state of California because that will increase competition for the sale of oranges in the state of California. That's a big crop for us in the state of California, and we want to keep the prices higher to benefit our local farmers. And we can do that if we exclude Florida oranges. Well, such a regulation or law would violate the U.S. Constitution, and states are not allowed to do that. So there's often regulation and litigation relating to our state laws, which arguably inhibit the transportation of goods across state lines. A second area related to regulating foreign corporations, and for that matter, alien corporations, is jurisdiction. Now, this is a very complicated topic. It's in your textbook. I think it's too complex a topic for the amount of time I'm going to give it. And therefore, I'm going to say that all you need to know for our class is that there are jurisdictional limits to any state's ability to regulate a foreign 
or for that matter, an alien corporation. What is jurisdiction? It is the power of a court to rule over somebody. Let's suppose, for example, that you started a business in California. All of your assets are in California. All of your employees are in California. Everything's in California. But you make a sale to someone in Mississippi. Can you now get sued in Mississippi? That's the problem that is presented here. We're not going to explore it in depth, but I just want to warn you that this is a topic that oftentimes gets litigated, and you see it currently in the news a lot related to tax regulation. Many of us buy things on internet, for example, out of, outside the state of California, and therefore avoid having to pay California tax. You are seeing a lot of developments on this topic and how much the state can regulate, including taxing the importation of goods from other states. Again, these are topics that get complicated very quickly, and I'm more concerned that you understand the overview of the topic.